I call to order the meeting of the Budget and Oversight of Public Elections Committee of the San Francisco Elections Commission. Today's date is Wednesday, February 4th, and the time is now 6.01 p.m. Roll call. I am Commissioner Jordanek here. Commissioner Rowe? Here. And we also have with us today Director Arntz, and we also have, um, could you introduce yourself again? For Anthony Abelbein with the Mayor's Great, thank you for coming. Item number two, general public comment, seeing no public. Move on to item number three, approval of minutes from the previous meeting. Move to approve. I second. Uh, vote, Commissioner Rowe? Yes. Or, I'm sorry. Um, public comment, seeing none. Is well, there we got. We yeah, do have a possible just, public. Yeah. Would you like you to comment public. on the minutes? Yeah. Okay, um, any discussion? Uh, so I have a vote, Commissioner Rowe? Yes. And myself with yes, the motion passes unanimously. Item number four, review of the department's proposed budgets, discussion and possible action regarding the proposed budgets of the Department of Elections for the 2015, 2016, and 2016, 2017 fiscal years. So Director Arntz, would you like to just start off by um, introducing anything or? Sure. So the, 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 the forms you have are actually from the mayor's office. These are the forms that the department will submit budget information to the controller's office on February 23rd. And, and the, the mayor's office will have a conversation with the department regarding the, the numbers in here. Um, so nothing's final, final, but this is the budget that we prepared uh, for the upcoming fiscal year and for the following fiscal year. And then uh, and it's in the format of these forms is entirely from the budget instructions that the mayor's budget office sets out. So it's not something that the, the department created. Uh, and then also, uh, for Anthony's sake, we actually put together this little uh, introduction, this guide to our budget, because uh, it's really hard to follow with all these different objects. And, 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 and the things, and even for us, the where items are placed within the budget have changed over the years. Ballots have been a different sub-object than they are now, voter guide. So, so we created this to give him a, a bit of a primer uh, as he goes through the budget. Uh, but then also I thought the commission uh, you know, could use it. And then we, we put in an explanation of the different columns on page two. Because even I tell you, even I read this, I at Form 3A, it just drives me out of my mind. I have a hard time following what, what it all means. So we put that in there. Uh, that was very helpful. Thank you. Oh, good. All right. And everything, all the, all the, the numbers in here are based on, on quotes from vendors. Uh, so it's, it's all tied to, to an actual quote uh, or, a, or a cost that we know is coming from a contractual relationship with the, with the vendor. So we haven't, we, we haven't made these numbers up. We, we got these numbers from specific sources. Uh, so that's so that's in our budget actually for this election is rather straightforward uh, we, we don't we don't have any big uh, uh, big projects in, in mind um, however the warehouse funding is in here 2.5 million dollars uh, I forget where, where where it's located so uh, the 22 million I think it is for the, the total yeah, 2.15, subtract 2.5, that's, that's the warehouse uh, funding for the next site. And then also, I don't think there's, there's nothing in here for the, for the voting system. Um, but that's definitely something, I've been in conversation with the mayor's office, the mayor's office is aware that the department will uh, be going forward for going out to bid for a new voting system. Uh, probably next fiscal year, but if we get the RFP done in this fiscal year, we'll, we'll issue it. Um, you know, but then we'll just see what happens. So, so yeah, so we do have some, some, some big issues, but they're not really in this budget. But the warehouse is in here, 2.5. The voting system's not in here. Uh, and other than that, it's a really straightforward budget. We're not really doing much different than past budgets. So, um. Where did you get the 2.5 number for the warehouse? That is based on uh, build out costs from from Pier 48, five hundred thousand um, dollars, and then the two million dollars I think is to to pay the the lease amount 
when, when we get it. And so that's just been uh, set aside, it's on reserve for us. And if we don't use all the money right away, then it would just go in back into the general fund. So we have to actually request that money. It's not something that's going to be in our budget that we have. It's going to be something on, on what's called reserve. And then we have to step forward and ask for it once we get a, a lease agreement. So with the, with the um, Pier 48, did you pay? Did you pay annually? What did you? Monthly. Monthly. Yeah. Okay. So the two million dollars is based upon. Uh, it'd be about two years' rent, I think. Did we pay? Well, not be a year's rent. We paid uh, like two fifty, no one fifty. Be about two years, a year and a half worth of, of rent of, at the current rate for Pier Forty Eight. So I think we're paying one fifty seven a month. It might even be in here. Um, yeah, so just multiply that out. So it'd be one point eight, you know, per year. So you're just taking. You don't know what your space you're going to find or what it's going to cost. Right. So you're taking your best estimate based upon what you've been doing for Pier Forty Eight and what it costs to build out and putting yeah. that number in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, and I appreciate the fact that it's it is a little bit extra than just a year because we don't know what the build out costs would be. You right, know? and you don't know what the lease rate's going to be right. either. Right. Right. And so and I assume the mayor's office understands that these are, you know, subject to you finding a space. So you've had oh, yeah. those discussions. Oh, yeah. And the same thing on the voting equipment, or you've been talking with them about, you know, we're going to need a number there. And I assume the reason you don't put a number in now is because you just don't have a reasonable projection of what that's going to cost. Well, we have talked numbers. We've used, but the numbers that we've discussed with the mayor's office, and you know, I've. And I've, I've, I've spoken to Kate Howard, the budget director, about this a couple of times. I met with her. Um, it's based on the contract amount for the current system and just projecting an increase over time. So add 25% or, or whatever to the, to the purchase amount for the current system and just moving that forward as, as just as a, as, a, as a placeholder number. So the mayor's office has that, that number in mind. As we go forward. And why is that not in here? Is that because it's further out? Or why? Uh, why is it blank as to that? Uh, well, right. There's nothing to. There's nothing. There's nothing to apply it to. I mean, and, I, and also one thing is I'm, I'm sensitive, and I think the mayor's office is too. We don't want us to start putting out numbers, mm -hmm. then people are going to think, well, that's that's the number to hit. And so if we, when we do go out to bid, we want people. We want mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yeah, just to clarify that, so you said there were cases where you, you sort of did a projection of whatever it was, 25% more, but in other cases you didn't put a number down? Or was it in all cases you didn't put a number down just for the, the, the new voting system? There's nothing in here for a new voting system. Okay. Yeah. And then the, the thing about the 25% more, was that... Um, Discussions with the mayor's yeah. office. Okay. Yeah, that, that, was just, that was just creating a best guess. Okay. I thought there was something in here about where you projected a slight increase, but maybe I can't remember if that was. Well, 16, that was this will be to. for 15, 16, 16, 17. The voting system contract ends at the end of 16. And so there's, there's one, there's the A field in here, I believe, for 17 that includes the, the maintenance payment for the current system, and I think it contemplated an additional charge. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. And again, and that, and that would essentially be a placeholder number, placeholder number as well for fiscal year 1617, since the contract it won't be in effect at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I had um, this is one general question, and then I wanted to, I thought what we could do is just quickly go through each like sheet and see if. We could just skip over if, or if either of us had a question. I, I have some questions on some of the sheets. But um, one general question I had was, I know you, you have your, your base budget and then your revised version. And in, in the second fiscal year, you reduce it down because there's only one election as opposed mm -hmm. to two. And I was wondering why, why didn't you have, when you created the base budget, did you not know that there would only be one election? Of course. Oh. Oh, you didn't know, or? Oh no, of course we know. Okay. Yeah, we, we. Yeah, well, so that's what I was wondering. Like, why, why not just map out one election because, space? Because the the so what we put for this year moves automatically to the next fiscal oh, okay. year. Okay. 
So the base budget's automatically the previous year's? Okay. I see. Okay, so yeah, I thought I thought we could just you know quickly go through each tab and then see if, if there are any questions. So form one A is seems blank. And, and Commissioner Rowe, if you have any questions about any tabs, just just stop me. So form one B is the graphs of vote by mail voters and stuff like that. One C seems to be blank. Two A this um, seems to be blank. Okay, 2B, this is the various fees and things you receive. 2C. I, I do have some questions okay. on 2B if that's how you want to do it. Yeah. So my first question was um, for the column, second column to the end fiscal year of last increase, that's all blank, and I was wondering why if there were some increases. At least on my copy, it's all I think it's the fiscal year of, of the increase of, of the rate, I believe. And there's been no increase in the rate. And so, like for the candidate for, for school board, $500 has been the filing fee. That hasn't changed. For so, and, and maybe I'm just misunderstanding the form, but for instance, look, you're looking down at mayor, uh, for 2014-15, it was 5,048, and then it goes up in 15-16 to 57.06. Right? Am I reading that right? Yeah, but still 2% of the salary, and so it was, it was oh. probably a bump in salary for the mayor, and so the filing fee is 2%. Okay. That's why. So you didn't raise the rate. The number went up just because of the. the the formula is the same, but the, the base number from which it calculated. And right. so you don't have any, the, the department has no discretion in that. That's that's set by, by statute, I presume. Okay. Yeah, everything here is set in the MEC, uh, the municipal elections code. Yeah, everything's here in the MEC. There's nothing here. So even if we even if we wanted to change a rate, we'd have to change the code okay. to do it. Thank you. Now, in, is it in this form? Did you kind of have some kind of estimate of how many candidates would apply then? To? Yeah. And that's on there in the, the est units estimate. Yeah. Estimated. Okay. Just kind of based off previous elections and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And these, and that actually, we're getting we 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 yeah. And this we're, we're getting more accurate on this. We paid more attention to uh, the trends we've had in the past and. There's one that kind of surprised. Look in the um, what really surprised me was the paid ballot arguments. So we ended up with that's down at line item 33, mm -hmm. where for this past election we had 108 thousand dollars worth of paid ballot arguments because we had 212 arguments uh, come in, and that's you know it's more than we expected by far. And there's no limit on that. That's right. As many as come in. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, but the but the other but and again I mean we, we can we can put a number out there from from past. For averaging out, you know, the how many candidates per for past contest of a type it doesn't mean anything. But it's interesting to me that we actually came pretty close mm -hmm. uh, by doing that. Okay. So two C, it says it's not applicable. Two D. It's, um, okay. Three A. So this is kind of the meat of things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, Commissioner, do you have any questions here? I've got a couple. Uh, go ahead. I, okay. I don't have anything significant. But. So, one of the um, one of the questions I had was this, uh, and I sent you an email about this earlier. But object thirty-five. This is the line about a third from the bottom of the first page. It says other current expenses, and there's a lot in this line, and. and you mentioned, well, the, the description mentions things like advertisement, outreach videos, and so on. Is there, um, is there a way to get like a more fine-grained breakdown of that or? Yeah, or we can, I can provide you that. You could do that, okay. Could you maybe just talk a little bit about what that covers? It looks like in the, the first fiscal year it's 4.8 million and then the second one it's 2.8 million. So the ballots will be in there. So for, oh, this is the ballots too? Yeah. 
So if you look in your the guide, it's, the guide's actually a better explanation okay. than the note on here. And so if you look at object 35, so the, the ballots, um, the rosters, but mostly the ballots are the, the driving factor for that. Mm -hmm. And so we're projecting a five card ballot for November, a four card ballot for June. And so that's why those costs are as big as they are for 35. For the second fiscal year? I mean, right. Okay. And well, well, the second fiscal year would be the November 2016 election, and we we're projecting five cards okay. for that election. And then, we're, we're, since we're going with the bilingual ballots, we're gonna we'll have a somewhat of an increase with the number of cards uh, driving this as well. What, what were your projections on? So there are three elections going forward. There's the, the November 2015 you projected. What, what, five, four, five. five. Yeah. Okay. Oh, five, four, five. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, and, and in terms of like the granularity, is that like how do you decide the different objects? Is that something you just kind of what what makes the most sense to your team or no? Well, so most of this, most of where the costs are placed, the category, the categorical costs are placed is through time working with the uh, now the called the General Services Administration or uh -huh. agency. So that, since they're the ones who are paying the invoices for the department, uh, mm -hmm. they, through time, we've worked with them, and I think probably I'm sure the mayor's office has been involved, but mostly GSA and the controller's office, uh, to find what, what objects to place mm -hmm. particular categories of stuff. So. And then are the more detailed breakdowns that you said you could provide, are those, do you also provide those to the the offices you work with, or is it only if they request it? If they wanted like a more detailed breakdown of, you mean like the mayor's office? Yeah, I mean yeah, if they ask for it, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll provide it. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you have any questions on this form? Um. I had one technical one, the premium pay for uh, bilingual services, is mm -hmm. that just a, like a city requirement that you pay extra, or what right. is that? It's uh, in the MOU, the, M the Memorandum of Understanding with the Union 1020, uh, with uh, SEIU 1021. Okay. Uh, so there's there's a set amount that you pay based on the number of, of amount of time someone uses a second language in the course of his or her work, and then, uh, Ideally, these folks will be uh, with, you know, certified in that language and actually hired into that position so their language skills are part of that position. And that way you can put some structure around those costs. But if someone were to you know, be enlisted to provide language assistance at the voting station in, in City Hall and they're not certified, we would still provide the premium pay. Okay. So. And then um, I was trying to understand the temp, temp salaries, um, increase of additional employees, again, to provide services in Filipino. Is that something, I was just trying to understand how that, if, if that's a temporary thing or you, or you just, all, for all future elections, you're going to have to have extra costs, right. but eventually that'll even itself out and you won't have to explain it. Is that why? Probably. It's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I guess the question I had about the permanent salaries was I know I know you're down some positions in s some pretty significant positions. So are you just planning on maintaining where you are right now? How, how, what, what are your thoughts with that? I so the pos positions are funded. So even if they're not filled, they're still funded. Okay. And that's what this is. This, so this this is this is the the genesis for it's called the ASO. The uh, help me, Anthony. Salary ordinance. Annual salary, annual salary ordinance. And so from here, the city creates the annual salary ordinance, which indicates which positions are funded in a department. And so even if we don't fill a position, it'll be funded due to the, this and the, and the, what's called the ASO. Uh, so as far as us hiring, we, we're, we're hiring now. We're in the process of, I think I said the last commission meeting, the 1403 election clerks. There's nine positions we're, gonna, we're going to be filling. We're, where we've already uh, put out the job description and the referral for the uh, uh, 1842 for precinct services. So 
it's, it's ongoing and then the 1950 will be coming up. So uh, even if the positions aren't filled in a, on a permanent basis, they'll be funded and we're already in the process of, of filling those positions now and going through the process. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you historically had two assistant directors, is that the right mm -hmm. term? And I've had two you've, positions, right. You've had two positions, mm -hmm. and for the past couple of years you've only had one of those filled, right. correct? Mm -hmm. And so, just before I get to the, the main question, let's say you have a funded position like that, but you don't fill it, mm -hmm. it was in this line item, what happens to what happens to that? Does it just stay in for future budgets? But the, you know, I, mean, I guess I'm not, I'm not I'm not articulating this. But there's some missing money somewhere, and I'm trying to figure out where it gets accounted for. Does it go back to them? Oh, yeah. We don't we don't get it. so so several things can happen with the position if if you don't fill it. One, uh, the the may, the board's budget analyst can recommend that the the, the position be removed from the department's uh, roster essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, but what happens, what we, especially with the high-level position, you don't want to have those because they're hard to get. Right. So you don't want to have them uh, removed from. So every every budget cycle, every budget presentation, every budget year, uh, we have to show attrition. What's called attrition savings. So we have to show, and it's just it's just how it is. We have to show savings in salaries by showing attrition savings. And the way that departments do that is if they have an unfilled position at the time of the budget process, then they say, the departments usually say, well, we're going to make that our attrition savings. Okay. And so then, and so, because if you don't show attrition savings, then the, the board will try to find cuts elsewhere. And they'll think you don't need it. Right. So that's really my concern, and, and I'm not in your department on a daily basis, but it's a big department doing a lot of work in certain times incredibly stressful and busy. So you've gone two, at least two years, I think, without that second position filled, and I would be concerned about um, you know, creating the implication that you don't need it, because it seems like it sure would be helpful. And I know you've, you've, mm -hmm. you and I have talked about plans to try to use that and, and get somebody correct, you know, really good in that position, but are, are you concerned about that, or you just, it's... About it's, losing it? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit every, every budget cycle I am. Um, but if we can show savings elsewhere, has it doesn't seem to be an issue, and these those types of matters seem to be more pressing other fiscal years mm -hmm. than others, and this seems not to be a year where it'll be a, a, a pressing concern. Okay. So at this point, no. Um, I mean, I know you have on your radar to fill that position, so. Uh, I yeah. Think, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it's it touches on a more general issue, and that is, uh, is there a process where or is it during this budget process where you compare like a completed budget year with the amount of money that you spent or and you kind of see what the difference was? For personnel? No, for the budget as a whole. You know, for example, the, the fiscal year that we most recently completed where you kind of go back and see what, what was the, um, how much money was budgeted versus how much the department Yeah, spent. yes. So the controller's office maintains a report that contrasts expenditures to uh, to funding levels. Mm -hmm. So then, if there's anything left over, then you, there's two things that can happen. One, it gets called what's called carried carried forward. So if the department identifies specific uses for any uh, remaining funds from mm -hmm. one fiscal year, the department can request to have those funds carried forward mm -hmm. to the next next fiscal year to complete a transaction of some type. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the funding for personnel is, is not right. is not carried forward. At least it hasn't been in my experience. Um, or in what in what typically happens is anything that's 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 left over just goes back into the general fund. Mm -hmm. and so we don't have we don't carry this account with us that, of savings through time. So either we spend it, or it goes in the general fund, or we get a small amount moved forward for a, a specific transaction that we've identified and been approved. Are any of the carryover funds listed on this on these forms, or no? Oh, okay, I know the warehouse is sort of kind of a special case of that. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the warehouse is in the reserve fund, and so it's like it's not just I can't just grab two point five million dollars and spend on something. I have to yeah. actually go to the board and I see. request it. I see. Okay. So let's move on to 
form four. So this is uh, equipment requests. Now, so are the is the equipment that listed in budget form four is that stuff that was already allocated? It's because um, oh, this is new stuff. Yeah. And the numbers don't add up. I think on yours, we, for some reason, I think that top cell didn't get into the. They didn't. Okay. So just so you know, so it should be one eighty six six six. Well, the previous, if you have one eighty six six six. I do. I do. Okay, it should be one ninety one five four one. So the these uh, computer servers are. These aren't web servers, right? These are kind of like desktop type servers that used to do things. The Dell machines. They're, you mean as far as like results reports? <laughs> what, like what happened, the site results, supporting the results reporting? I just meant what are these servers used for? Are they, are they um, yeah, I it, mean. It's all, in, it's, it's almost all in-house stuff. I don't think there's, I don't think there's any posting of web pages mm -hmm. on these because there's, we have SFGov, which is run by D, Department, Department of, of uh, Technology and then we have the third party that hosts the, the, the like the, the data pages. The results pages, okay, yeah, the data pages, right. I see. Oh, so that's not, that's what I was asking about. Right. That's yeah. not these. And this, on the uh, scanner, you asked me about that? Yeah. So this, this, it's not to tabulate, it's not to scan ballots and tabulate results. Mm -hmm. It's so, when when uh, when ballots are uh, not counted or processed for whatever reason, they're outstacked. It's called, and so we have to manually re review those. And, and we have this the scanning system that we have designed. We call it Frankenstein. It's like there's like four different things that we've crammed together and made it work. And we, and we there's a barcode that we put on there, and it's got the ballot type, the precinct, and the card number on it. And so this scanner will pick up that barcode which has been a challenge for us, and it also will separate. It's on the actual ballot? The yeah, yeah. Is it, is it there, um, is it something you put on after the fact, or is it there from the beginning? From the beginning, okay. yeah. And so yeah. You, is it unique to each ballot type, or? It's, it's not a unique identifier of, it, it, it identifies it's, the card, the precinct, and the ballot okay, type. I see. But I couldn't go back and identify your ballot yeah, using that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then this, um, the extractor, you've got two here, and how many do you currently have? Two. Oh, so you're going to have four after this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. John, do you have a sense of whether it is less expensive for the department to process, to, to handle, start to finish, yeah. a vote by mail than, a, than somebody who goes to a polling place? I mean, is there generally going to be cost savings the more people go vote by mail, do you think? No. I mean, as long as you have both processes, you don't have any savings. You'd have to, you'd have to remove one or the other. And you have to remove the polling place and go vote by mail. And then your vote by mail is about 25% less cost than the precinct. You don't have as much. 25% is a lot, but it's not by going all vote by mail you don't have as high of a savings as you would expect. But, but as long as there's, there's two approaches to voting, you don't have any savings. So even as the vote by mail increases, it doesn't, like, it doesn't decrease our polling place costs. Those, are, those go up too, they're, they're, they're static and they, and they increase. Because the level, because we have to provide the same level of service that isn't dependent on turnout, you know, our use of, of those services. And the, the consolidation isn't enough to make a material difference it does. It's. I think it's uh, like a 24. I think it's 24 percent savings. So it is. So that yeah. So if, yeah, if you have less stuff, it but is. But 24 percent of the polling place costs right. is a small percent of the overall budget, I presume. Oh no, it, it's. I mean, there's there's still a lot that goes into it. But mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not as. I think it's. I think we save around 225 thousand mm -hmm. dollars by that 25, 24, 25 percent reduction in polling places. Okay. And then, of course, as there are more permanent absentees, there are costs that go up for each absentee voter you get, right? Because you have more envelopes to print and more ballots to print. Yeah, but the production is not the cost; it's the process. Okay. It's the, 
and it's the timing of the processing that really creates the cost. Okay. So. And I take it this extra equipment is designed to reduce those timing costs. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also more accurate. Yeah. Typing and right. And, and yeah, right. Because what this does too is and it's, it's and it's it's really it's really inside baseball. But these way these extractors open these envelopes. It doesn't they don't harm the cards. So we're not having to do remakes. We have to like, you know transfer the voter's intent to a fresh card because the one that we used the, that was open the envelope that was open with the cards inside the cards aren't being sliced themselves. And that happens with other openers that we've used where you, you put an envelope through an opener. And there's a certain percentage that get hit that, hit that. So you save a lot of labor costs. You're not having to remake it, and you also amount. reduce the amount of error because you don't have a human right. person right. with potential. And, and that's and the remake process. Talking about timing, hits at the wrong time, you know, because all because you get because you can maintain and stay current before election, after election day. It's just this wave of stuff, and then when you have four and five card ballots, I mean, it's just a lot of stuff that people in are in the middle of your most yeah. intense right. pressure. So, with the two that you had before, it was kind of like you had more ballots that you needed to extract than you had machines available. It's kind of like you had downtime because that's why you need the extra two. Is it? I mean, describe kind of what what the bottleneck was. It, the, the rate. The rate that we were extracting the ballots really wasn't causing savings, didn't, didn't generate cost savings uh, compared to having someone doing it themselves because you have to pull them out, pull the cards out, plus we had a five card ballot the very, very first time. <laughs> then you have to backfold, you have to get the crease out of the cards. Um, so we just, we, we, need to, we need to get cards faster to the people that can do the backfolding. And so, so, so it's a balance with, with the staffing here. We can, with more machines, we can have a, a larger group at the beginning of the day doing the backfolding instead of c coming in on a delayed schedule at 10 o'clock versus 8 o'clock, you know? So it's just the it's just mm -hmm. dance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so go on to form five. Yeah, so this is an interesting one. and. Um, have, have, has the commission, have you already spoken with the commission about the, the electronic poll book or is this new, a new project? Are you on form D? Oh, yes, form yeah. D. Yeah, so no, no, the, we have, I haven't, no, I haven't spoke to anybody. And this is not something that we're, we're doing for next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just something that we're informing. Uh, is, Anthony, is Coit still in existence? Yes, sir. Is it? Yeah. So essentially we're informing, I think, Coit through this budget process that there might be something. And the Coit is the, um, what's Coit stand for? Committee on Information. Committee on Information, yeah. Technology. Uh, so this is something that we're, cause so it's like with the RFID, uh, the radar frequency identification um, system that we have, we went through Coit for that. So that's, that's what this is. So we're not actually purchasing anything. We're just giving information about something that we're interested in, and this is, we, we're hoping to do a, a pilot project um, in November, maybe in June as well. And so that's what this is. We're not. It's not actually a statement of to, to purchase anything, right here. But there were there were dollar values with it, right? At budget. the very end. I think okay. It was, yeah. Now, could you talk a little bit more about how that works? Like, are there are there um, multiple companies that have a system like this or, or is it more like there are there's one company that you're thinking about or, or um, well, that, so that you're able to estimate the costs and yeah we're trying to piggyback off another county okay uh, so um, I forget which one uh, I think it was Nevada County they they went through the process and so they chose a poll book that uses just standard uh, tablets it's an application actually that they install on the tablet, whereas other companies that they they have their own tablet device and they they install the, the software on there. So the the one that is in here is actually the 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 less proprietary, less expensive approach to having poll books mm -hmm. would be this right here. Um, and this is just an example. This is not final. This is not saying we're going to pick that that system. So. Put that out there. 
Okay, and I like the idea, especially because of the, you know, when you have a municipal election and a statewide election, and you have to, people, so many people have to switch polling places. It does cause a lot of agitation at the polling places, and I think it's great if you can find a way to try to cut through that and say, no, really, here, here you go. People trust technology these days more than mm -hmm. paper, so. Not with voting, but. Yeah, good point. Because, like, one thing, like, wireless, if we could use these wirelessly, and I don't mean, I don't mean at the polls, but if we could just ha bring these back to the office and wi wirelessly get the number of signatures that are registered on, on these poll books, that would make things so much faster than having to just plug in the USB and, and upload and everything. And I'm sure there's other information too that we could we could pull from this, but you just can't you can't use any wireless anything because it's not secure. You know. So is so you're you'll, you're planning on doing a pilot project in November 2015, the electronic poll books. Then we're thinking about okay, it. Okay, thinking about yeah. it. And does that have to go through an RFP process? A pilot? No, not, not a pilot. Okay. Okay. I don't think so. I've never done it in the past, so I've just, you know. Yeah, I see. Usually it happens for free. Mm -hmm. You've been good about getting people <laughs> wait, wait. to use the, we, yeah. this, the city as yeah. a test case and yeah. working with you. Yeah, well, the, it says for, um, it says 50,000 for the 15-16, and is that? Yeah, yeah, I was talking to Talia. That, that, I mean, it's a real number based on, I think it's Nevada County. But at the same time, you know, I'd like, I'd like to, well, I'm sure we can figure something out. Yeah, sounds interesting though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to be one of the pilot precincts. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, let's see, so what's next here? Form, is it seven? Or four? Form so e? Form, form E had the costs for the project. And then form six, is not applicable. So form seven, position changes, no changes. Form eight, legislative changes. So we've got form nine A, this is contract changes. Okay. Um, so let's see. Okay, so this is the, the Dominion stuff, and also, oh, this is where it, where it talks about the anticipated 25% to 30% higher. It's on the, the second, this is the bottom of the first page of this. Yeah, this is actually, this is actually repeating information that I've provided to the mayor's office on potential cost increases with a new contract for a contract for a new system. Okay. Okay, so you do have, you are you are kind of like filling in some unknowns there. Oh, this is for further out. Yeah, yeah, this is just, again, just, this, this is just uh, yeah. provide notice. Yeah. For, um, on the second page of Form 9A, you talk about IAMS, the Election Information Management System. Mm -hmm. Is that, what's the, do you have like a contract with them, or is that just a year to year that you renew, or? Uh, Do you know? I think it's a contract. It's got to be a contract. I think we have a. I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. Actually. Yeah, I'd be interested to know if that if that's a, a year to year. Um, Can I ask why? Why? Why would we? Why? Oh well. Um, well, for example, if uh, for example, if a new voting system had worked with a, an election management system, maybe it would make more sense to do those together. And um, I mean, that would be one example where it might. But if if the election management system's contract was going several years in the future, then you wouldn't be able to do that or something. But, it's harder to change an election management system than it is a voting system. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you changed in the past recently, right. didn't yeah. you? You we had to convert stuff over. And, yeah. Uh -huh. We moved from DIMS, which is one the other major uh, system in the, in the country, uh, to DFM. DFM's 
uh, facilitates the actually exporting importing information from outside sources better than DIMS does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and also I was just kind of curious how the model is different from the voting system to contracting. Do you have any questions on this stuff, question around? No. And then the Ross, oh, this, this is kind of a, a side question, but maybe, maybe this isn't necessarily related to this, but with the polling, with the voter signatures in the roster, um, do, you, do you do anything with those signatures? Like we don't if, verify them. Yeah, so what is, is that more for if there needed to be an investigation afterwards that you just have them available or? Well, I mean, I, the intent of the law, I don't know if I'm oh, okay. one actually, but it's the law the requires law. that, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's continue on to, so this is the Prop J stuff. Yeah, so I was, I, I don't know what Prop J is, so I was wondering if you could maybe just talk a little bit about that. So Prop J, I don't have the whole history of Prop J, but the idea behind Prop J is if the four departments outsource work, they have to show that the outsource cost is less than the city can do using city employees. So that's what this is. And uh, we outsourced the assembly of vote by mail ballots, I think, in 2006, around there. And ever, so ever since, every, every year, we've had to do a Prop J analysis and the controller's office oversees, and then the, the controller's office must approve our application to outsource the work based on the cost comparisons. So that's, that's what this is. Is it outsourced overseas? No, 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 no. Oh. So what, what, what we outsourced are the assembly of vote by mail ballots. But that's done here? Or no, it's done in Everett, Washington by K&H. Okay. But see, with the, with the, and the reason we're, we have to go Prop J on this, and I don't know, it's the only thing we should end at some point, but uh, we did use city employees to assemble vote by mail ballots for a number of years. But then it's it just with, but when the, the vote by mail ballots, the number just kept increasing. It just wasn't. Looks like a huge cost savings. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah and the service, there's no way we can, there's no way the city can't replicate this, the automated services uh, associated with the assembly of vote by mail ballots by K and H. But so we go through the, we go through the steps every year, you know, and that's what you have here. But so that's interesting. It seems like there are, there are lots of things that the department outsources, though, right? Like you, you've mentioned in the past, you know, producing the be a voter campaign video, or or um, maybe like um, I, I'm not well. It's not work that we were doing before. That's that's the. I mean, if, if it was, it was, it was before I showed up. So there was a transition oh. point where the city employees, temporary, they were temporary as needed though, they weren't permanent employees, where we had, we would get 85 people down in Brooks Hall, underneath Bill Graham, we, we would assemble. And so we stopped doing that and had, had vendors. Okay, so you're saying if there's a case where the department was already doing something using city resources and you wanted to switch away? Right. Then, okay, I and see. And would justify the, the Prop J. Okay. And even, yeah, and then, and, and then there's probably something similar with IT, I don't think it's Prop J. Where if we try to like, and this is something I keep telling you, because you know we there's so many so much we could do around IT, but we can't just outsource it. We can't bring we can't get a contract. We have to show that the city can't do the work. Hmm. So I don't think it's Prop J. I think it's it's a it's a different process. But mm -hmm. that there's always there's always something that you just can't go go do it. You know, there's always process around it. Mm -hmm. This is an example right here. And then something like the electronic poll books that doesn't fall into this category because it's. A completely new project? Is that? Well, there's really no city employees involved in the production of, of rosters, for instance. Uh -huh. So that's what the poll book would, would replace, would be the paper rosters. Mm -hmm. and, and those have been printed by a vendor for a long time. Um, and, you know, and potentially, you know, I don't, again, I don't know why we, we, we keep doing Prop J for the ballots. To me, it's like, well, you know, we, we, how many years you got to keep showing this? But Have you um, asked? No, I haven't, because I haven't been doing the budget last oh, couple okay. years, so I wasn't going to pay my butt. Um, but, you know, <laughs> other folks have been doing it. But now that I'm here, you know, maybe I'll, I'll ask the question. Because 
Because then, you know, I get the same letter, not the same, but it, and the controller's office reviews it, but I'm sure they are wondering too why they have to keep doing it, unless there's some process issue around this, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um. I, mean, I mean, I'm sure the intent behind the law is simply to make sure that, you know, we're not letting go city workers in exchange right. for sending stuff elsewhere unless there's a good reason right. to do it. But it does seem like there must be some endpoint at which right. you no longer have, maybe, I'm, I'm surprised it's more than just the first year, but uh, maybe, you know, I don't know. It's, it would be worth asking, I suppose. Uh, it's kind of interesting information to have. It's not necessarily, it's kind of interesting to note that you are saving quite a bit of money mm -hmm. by efficiencies mm -hmm. here, so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily bad to have it in here, but. Let's see, um, there's, there's one other question I have here, and, and that is, and I can't remember where in the budget I saw this, but like the distinction between a, a general fund versus a non-general fund, what is, what is that distinction? Well, general fund, we're all general, everything, all of our funds everything is comes from general fund, okay. unless we had a grant. Okay. Uh, like we had HAVA grants for the Help America Vote Act, and Prop 41 grants for voting systems, which we purchased the current voting systems with. But otherwise, we're all we're a general fund. Okay. Department. Um, Anthony, did you want to comment on anything since you're here? Or? Oh, uh, this is my first budget cycle um, with the mayor's office and also covering elections. So this for me is helping me prep for the budget season. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's see. So my, my only other comment, if you're finished, is um, I had I asked John if uh, it's possible to, so, sort of similar to your question, to get before the full commission meeting uh, an update on, or maybe at the meeting, you don't have to provide it in writing, but an update on any significant discrepancies between the, the projected and the actuals, which is kind of similar to what your question was. But if and I suppose now that you're doing a two-year budget, it would be projected in actuals and also if you're, when you're resetting that second year to the first year, if there's anything significant that had to change. And I don't know exactly what significant means. I don't want you telling me, you know, it cost us $500 here more. That's more information than we need. But I think if there's any, any numbers that you either spent quite a bit less or spent quite a bit more than was projected or when you for instance, the 2015-16 changed a lot when you did it this year as opposed to when you did it last year. I think that would be helpful for us to, to know. There, there may be no significant discrepancies, but it, it would be good to, to know that. So if you could try to look at that. You mean differences, because discrepancy kind of has a bad a bad ring to it in my mind, you know. I don't mean um, any any bad know, ring. So I don't. It might yes. Not bureaucratic yeah. mindset. Like, yeah, um, I just mean if, if right. I just mean if it's I'm sure, you know if there's anything that you projected that it came in significantly different. Okay. A surprise, basically. Okay. You know, something right. where you're surprised. Where oh, we we actually didn't spend that okay. fifty thousand um, dollars. You know, I, I I'm just sort of interested in knowing. I think budgets are really important, but we also should look back at them. And it's, I think, based on the consistency of your budgets, I suspect that you're very consistent. I'll call it differences. I didn't mean discrepancy with a negative connotation. I suspect yours are, have been pretty darn close because you can see through the years that you're not changing much. But it's always useful to look back and see um, if there were any, you know, any surprises. Yeah, OK. Does that make sense? It does, but it does, and, and we'll do that. But it, our drivers are always the number of cards and the size of the voter guide and turnout, you know. And so if, if, if we're off on one, let's say let's say we, we reject a, a five card and it's a it's a four card, that's going to be a hundred thousand bucks right there, you know. That's going to drop. And then if you have four card and, and you projected a fifty percent turnout as it being a thirty. Which would be, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we know what drives the, the changes in the cost. Um, I guess the, you know, the reason that I'm interested in the question, I understand that, four card versus five card. You don't know right now. You're predicting right. an election two years down the road. Right. So you're saying, oh, gosh, five cards, I don't know. But as part of our kind of overseeing process, if there were anything surprising in there, it would be good for us to know. Oh, you know, oh, lease costs went way up. It's much to our surprise. Or we didn't anticipate 
that you know health uh, and it's not health costs, but mm -hmm. it would just I think it would be useful information for the commission to know. And when I say significant, maybe it would help you if I if I gave you you know some set number. I don't I don't know what that you is. You can't. But I'll, I'll, I really don't want the little details. Yeah. I just want to know if there's anything big that. That we should know about. Yeah, really. Okay. So, yeah. can I ask to clarify? Are you saying that for the fiscal year that was the most recent one that was completed, or do you mean between like 2015 think, to 2016? Uh, I guess what I let me. I'm not sure I understand the question, oh. but what I'm talking about is looking back at last year's. So last year, you know what the actuals were okay. for 2014-15. Compare those to what you budgeted for 2014-15, and see if there are any significant differences that came in as a surprise. Which is, well, we had four cards versus five cards. I don't really mm -hmm. care about that. I, under I understand that, but if there's something else that was unusual, I'd like to know about it. And then the second half is because you are doing a two-year projection. It would be comparing the 2015-16 year that budget that you've got here versus the 2015-16 budget that you presented us with last year. If you had to make any significant, unexpected adjustments, I'd be interested in knowing that as well. And for my purposes, I don't really care about four card versus five card. That's completely out of your control and you've got to pick a number when you're making a budget. But if there's some other surprise, I would be interested in knowing that. Yeah, I think, I think, um, like one possible way to answer that might be if this form 3A here that has all these lines, if seeing that for, I guess the most recently completed fiscal year is the 2013-2014, because it, it ends Well, if I'm understanding those, 3A is the budget, not the actual. Well, that's what I was saying. I meant for each of these lines, what, what was the actual for the, for the previous? So like if you, you take, Form 3A for the 2013-2014 fiscal year, pull up these numbers, and then next to it, put with the actual for each line. So, If you've got that data, if it's not, I, mean, I don't want to send you on an, an errand that's going to take you a lot, a lot of time. So you, I guess you can use your you know, judgment and let us know at the next meeting what you were able to do within mm -hmm. A reasonable. I don't want somebody spending a week trying to pull out numbers to present this personally. Maybe some other commissioner would, but I don't think that's necessary. Well, there'll be numbers in the budget system that, we can pull it that out. you can pretty easily pull out. That'd be that'd be very helpful. Okay. Well, great. Um, I, I have no further questions, um, Commissioner Rowe. I'll make a motion to forward the proposed budget to the full commission with a recommendation that they. Prove it. Okay, I'll second that motion. And let's see, public comment. Um, seeing none. Uh, Commissioner discussion. None. Okay, uh, Commissioner Rowe. Yes. And I, myself with yes. The motion passes unanimously. The time is now 6:54 p.m. and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.